What's up everyone, Ross here from Warrior Trading. In today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through how to use TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim platform for active trading. If you are thinking about day trading or you're already a day trader, it's important for you to know that while TD Ameritrade is one of the most popular brokers out there and Thinkorswim is one of the most popular platforms, when you install it out of the box, it is not customized for day trading. And that's because, of course, think about their demographic. The majority of people using Thinkorswim and using TD Ameritrade are not active traders. So the platform out of the box when you first install it is really customized for someone who's taking a couple of trades here and there. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a few of the critical settings that you need to enable on your account in order to maximize the performance of the platform. Because out of the box, it is not tuned for active trading. This is very important if you're going to be an active trader using TD Ameritrade. And I know a number of traders who are using it. I know traders who have made seven figures on TD Ameritrade. So it's not to say that it's a platform only for beginner or retail traders that are you know kind of novice. You can totally be a successful trader on TD Ameritrade, but you've got to make sure you tweak those settings to get the most out of it. So the topics today, I'm going to walk you through in brief installing the, the Thinkorswim platform. I'm going to show you how to import a layout and I'm actually going to give you a link where you can download the layout that I use when I trade with Thinkorswim. So you can download my layout. I'll put that link down in the description. I'll pin it to the comments. The link will be hosted over on my website, warriortrading.com. So you can jump over there and you can download that link and then I'll show you how to import my layout right away. Now, the next thing is setting up your um, Thinkorswim platform as an active trader. So there's a couple settings that I'm gonna walk you through. I'm also gonna show you uh, the active trader section and kind of how I have that laid out. I'm gonna walk you through number four, setting up hotkeys so you can take very quick trades, getting in, getting out. And this, just for instance, um, this is a, a keypad that I use. Now, I use this for making videos and broadcasting on YouTube, but a lot of traders will use something just like this for pressing the buttons. Boom, see, I press that button, something happens. But you can do that just for trading as well. So for getting in and out of trades and things like that. All right, so back to the whiteboard. And then I will end with the critical settings that you need to make sure you enable to get the most out of the TD Ameritrade platform. Sound good? Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's get over to the screen. So you can see here on my screen, we've got Thinkorswim download. Very easy, very easy Google. And you can click on this link from TD Ameritrade. Of course, always make sure you, you know which site you're clicking on. This is TD Ameritrade. And right here, you can go down here as a Windows user and you can install 32-bit uh, or 64-bit. So I've already done this. So this has been installed. And now I'm gonna go uh, and launch the platform. Okay, so before you enter your username and your password, you can actually click on this settings uh, widget right here, and you can increase the memory usage on the Thinkorswim platform. Now, you're gonna wanna think about the type of computer you have. You don't wanna overload your computer, but I usually bump mine up to sort of in the middle of the range just to give it a little bit more uh, memory allocated to the platform. Because one of the things with Thinkorswim is that it's um, it's kind of a heavy platform. It's not super, super lightweight. There's other platforms that um, other folks use for, for active trading, including myself, that are much more lightweight, that are really run very, very quick. Uh, but TD Ameritrade's not one of them. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and log in here and then I'll show you the screen as soon as I'm logged in. Okay, so once you've got the platform installed, you can log in using your username and password, and then it's time to install your first layout. So if you have a layout from a friend, that's fine. If you wanna use my layout, that works too. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to setup, and then you're gonna to go to open shared item right here. And this is where you'll paste the URL of my layout. So down in the description or in the pinned comment, you can go over to warriortrading.com where I have the layout that I share with uh, Warrior Trading members and you can go ahead and paste that there. You paste it, you click preview, you click import, and then you go to setup and that new layout is right here. So you can then click on that. Now when you click on that, it's gonna switch over to this active trader window. So this active trader window actually looks just a, a smidge different. When you install it, it's gonna look like this. This is how it is when, um, when, when you install. It's gonna be four, a grid of four windows. So you've got one, two, three, four. 
So with this active trader area, this is where we're going to get into talking about um, the active trader. This is uh, gives you the ability to open a number of different grids as much as, as many as you'd like. And then when you click on this little link, click the number two, notice that this is a two, this is a two. So these are all lined up on the same uh, the same stock, right? So by doing that now, if we switch this to time and sales, if you pull this stock up or whatever stock it is, all three will update. So LGVN. And uh, my workflow generally, I use uh, scanners to find stocks to trade. So LGVN popped up a little while ago, so I wanted to use it kind of as an example. So the stock pops up, I can either click to buy just by clicking right here. Anywhere on here is an instant order to buy the stock. Or I can type in here and click the number of shares I want to buy and then click buy ask or buy market. When I'm ready to get out, I can sell market or join the ask. I always try to sell the ask. That's what I always want to do. I always want to try to sell the ask. If I have open orders that haven't filled, I can cancel all and I can flatten the position, which is, I only have 100 shares right now. You can see the quantity right there. But if you had like 1,122 shares, rather than having to type in, you know, 1,122 and then, oh my God, I typed it wrong. You can just click flatten and that'll close the position for you. So I always have auto send uh, turned on, so it won't bring up the confirmation window. Otherwise, it'll bring up this confirmation window, which would slow you down. So let's just say um, if I did this, see, it's going to bring up the confirmation window. And then you're like, oh, my God. OK, yeah, 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 yeah. Send the order, send the order. And it's just that's not it just slows me down too much. So I turn on auto send. Um, but when it comes to the pointing and clicking, note that that just did it for 100 shares. Well, wait one second. Why did it send it for 100 shares when I have 10 shares typed in right here? Maybe it didn't. Maybe it was confused. What if I do 25 shares? It sent it for 100 shares again. OK, we've got to go into the settings. So we're going to jump forward here and I'm going to show you one of the settings that you need to change. You're going to go to order defaults and you're gonna change this to whatever you want your order default to be. So if you want it to be 1,000 shares, 1,000 shares. If you want it to go up and down by increments of 1,000, you change it right there, and then just like that, apply. This is now gonna to try to send it for 1,000 shares. So that can be a little bit confusing because the level two works differently from what you have typed in right here. This is actually the active trader right at the top, and I had the level two sort of so close to it that it looks like it's the same, but it's not the same. So the number you type in here doesn't correspond to what happens here. It's a little, a little confusing, but you get used to it. So, but the reason that I like to have this on here is because I can point and click. And if I turn on the auto send, then I can point and click very quickly. Now these orders are gonna reject because I don't have enough buying power in this account to buy a thousand shares, which is fine. Um, so you could go over here and you would see under the monitor, you could go to canceled orders and you would see your orders that filled and you would see your orders that uh, are working and you would see the orders that didn't fill because not enough buying power. So that's fine. All right, so now go back to trade, back to active trader. And if I wanted to, so let's say um, I wanna sell a hundred shares. Now this is where it could be a little bit confusing because I can't click here to sell 100 shares because this is for buying. This is where I'd have to go like this. I'd have to go ahead and type 100 and then I can go up here and I can actually scroll up and then I could click, let's see, I'm in at 78. So I could click sell you know, up here and I could put the limit sell at what's like 1245. So you see the line of approximately where that sell order is. You could do that for setting profit targets. I honestly don't do that very often. Usually I just, when I'm ready to get out, I click join the ask like that. And my order is going to be sitting at the ask at 28 and it'll get filled and you know, whatever it'll, it'll get filled if it goes over 28 or I'll have to keep waiting. So, and over here on the time and sales, the layout that I have, I just kept it simple like this. But if you wanted to do, to do a grid of six, you certainly could. 
and you could have another set of charts here, or whatever the case is. So now let's talk for a second about hotkeys. All right, so hotkeys are important for the way I trade, and you do have some hotkey um, options with TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim. All right, so we're gonna go in back to settings, application settings, and you'll see the hotkeys are right here. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna minimize general, and we have active trader enabled. And notice I have bar buy market as shift one, okay? So my layout, when you install it, is gonna have buy market as shift one. So if I press shift one, it's gonna buy market to whatever I have right here. Whatever I already have typed in. This is again, is for the active trader window. We've got sell market, which is control Z. We've got sell ask, which is control K. And I usually would put little stickers on my uh, keyboard if I was a beginner trader, I would do that. And that's what I did just to help me remember what keys do what. And then cancel all is uh, control Q. So cancel all. And just like that, that gives me the hot keys that I feel like I absolutely need. So apply settings. So let's see. Um, so I, I could do control Q and I cancel that open order. Now I'm gonna do uh, control K and my order is on the ask right now at 24, right? I'm gonna control Q and cancel it. And I'll show you here, um, let me just move this over a little bit more. Okay, so you'll be able to see down here. So control K, there's a sell order out right there. So my sell order is at 24 and then I press control Q, the sell order's canceled. So you can go into here and you could see the, the orders that go out and then get canceled and then go out and they get canceled. And then if I just decide I wanna get out, I'll press Control Z and I'm out of the trade, boom, flat. This video cost me $57.28 to make. That's real money, but it's fine. So uh, now I have to go and make sure, let's see, I'll, see there was still a sell order there, so I just go double check that. But um, I always like to check to make sure there's no working orders because sometimes what a trader will do when they're using Active Trader, they might not realize it, but you know, they might accidentally put, you know, a, a buy order like that. And then they're like, okay, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. They leave and uh-oh, an order was left working. That's an open order. And if that stock drops, it will fill at 12 bucks and you're going to be surprised the next morning when you log in. So you want to make sure you cancel those open orders, cancel order, and you check this before you leave at the end of the day just to make sure you don't have any open orders that are sitting out there. All right, so now let's go to setup and let me show you a couple of tricks that um, will help you get the most out of uh, TD Ameritrade. Okay, so you looked at hotkeys, we've looked at order defaults. Um, now we're gonna go uh, notifications. I turn off these notifications. The order fills, I turn off because I find them distracting. So I turn this stuff off, um, I don't use it. The problem is, uh, especially when it's down in these areas, when it pops up, it covers important information. So I have that turned off always. And then we're gonna go into general. We've got account here. We're gonna go to orders, uh, positions. Let's see, we're gonna go to active trader. And so uh, I always make sure this is uh, set at zero and I move this one to, to recenter faster. Auto send AT order on down click. Yes, reset AT order template after setting. This is something you may want to turn off. It depends. I usually turn that off because after I send an order, like let's say I, I specifically type in an order here for 2,500 shares, I send it. I might want to click it twice. I don't want it to reset to default of 100 shares. So I, I turn that off on Active Trader. And then under system, I always want to change the quote speed to real time, no delay. I want it to be real time, no delay. All right, so make sure that's on real time, no delay. Uh, sound on, trading start, stop, I leave that off. And then all of this stuff, um, none of this I have changed. So the most important one uh, has been real time quotes and turning off the reset and making sure your order submission rate uh, doesn't have a limit. Because one of the things that uh, you might want to do if you were, you know, I'll just pull up, um, oh, let's see, I'm trying to think of a, um, a cheap stock. 
let's see. So Siri, so, um, so watch this. So I'm going to click this once and I'm going to buy 10 shares. And that time I just clicked it four times and now I've got 40 shares. So the thing here is that I want to be able sometimes to double click, right? If I want to do that, I want it to let me do it. And if you turn the auto submission on this from active trader, if you move it up, it's going to block you from doing those really quick trades because it's going to think that, you know, mate, you're like double clicking because you're wanting to click it once, not send two orders. So I understand why they have it, but you want to, for me, I want to make sure that's at zero. All right. So make sure that's at zero. Make sure your system is on real time, no delay. And I hope you like the layout. If you install the layout that I have, you know, let me know what you think of it. If you have some things that you think I could add to it to make it a little bit better, let me know. I'll keep working on it. And if you want to check out a video on how to start uh, trading in terms of strategy, one of the simplest strategies that I focus on is leading gainers. You can check out a video I'm going to put right in the top corner there. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you for the next episode right here.